Hey, this is Justin from BreakIntoCRE.com, and in today's video, what we're gonna do is talk about the time value of money in real estate investing. So what is the time value of money and how do you actually apply it to a real estate investment scenario? That's what we're gonna cover in today's video. Now, if you're new here on this channel, we talk about real estate investing careers and real estate financial analysis. So if you're looking to break into the industry for the first time, or you're looking to advance your career, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell. Now, the time value of money is one of the most fundamental and widely used concepts in all of finance. But how does it specifically apply to real estate and real estate investors? Well, in this video, what we're going to do is talk about how the time value of money specifically applies to real estate and how you can use it to make better investment decisions. Now, the basic premise of the time value of money is that a dollar today is worth more than a dollar tomorrow. And there are several reasons why this is the case, but one of the biggest reasons is because you can actually invest that dollar that you receive today before you can invest that dollar that you receive into the future and you can earn interest on that dollar today as soon as you invest it. Now in real estate, the most commonly used time value of money return metric is the internal rate of return or IRR. And the textbook definition of an internal rate of return is the discount rate at which the net present value of all cash flows is equal to zero. But out of context, that doesn't really make the concept any simpler to understand. And at the end of the day, it doesn't apply it specifically to real estate deals. So the way I like to tell people to think about an internal rate of return or IRR is that it's an annualized rate of return taking the time value of money into play. So in a real estate specific example, that means that the cash flows that you earn earlier on in your investment period are worth more than those same cash flows would be later on in your investment period. So for example, let's say you're analyzing a property and you plan to spend $1 million in cash to acquire the deal. Let's also say that you assume you can buy that property for a 7% cap rate, meaning that your net operating income in year one of your ownership period is going to be $70,000. Let's also say for simplicity's sake that you assume your net operating income will stay at $70,000 per year for as long as you own the property. And let's also say that you plan to sell the property at the end of your 10th year of ownership and you project your net sale proceeds at that time will be $2 million. Now, if you calculate your net profit over those entire 10 years of cash flows, you're going to get $1.7 million on the deal. And if you run the IRR or internal rate of return calculation on those cash flows, you're going to get an internal rate of return of 12.55%. But remember that the IRR is a time value of money calculation, meaning that the cash flows that you receive earlier on in your hold period are going to be more valuable than those same cash flows would be later on in your hold period. So what happens if you assume that you sell the property in year five rather than year 10? Well, if you assume that you'd sell the property at the end of year five, as you'd expect, your total profit would go down from $1.7 million to $1.35 million because you miss out on those $350,000 of annual net operating income. However, even though your total profits decreased, your internal rate of return jumped from 12.55% all the way up to 20.35%. And this is a prime example of the time value of money. Because you're receiving that $2 million cash inflow just five years from now, rather than 10 years from now, that $2 million is far more valuable five years from now than it is 10 years from now. And the reason why this is the case is really twofold. So the first is a simple inflation calculation. So if you make a simple assumption that inflation will be 3% per year going forward, then you're also assuming that the value of a dollar today is going to decrease by 3% per year. And what that means is that $2 million in today's dollars is only going to be worth $1.725 million five years from now. That said, if you wait a full 10 years to sell and receive that $2 million 10 years from now, that $2 million in today's dollars is only going to be worth $1.488 million at that time. This means that you're essentially missing out on $237,000 in today's dollars as far as the net sale proceeds are concerned by waiting an additional five years to sell. 
Now, aside from inflation eating away at the value of a dollar, you can also think of the time value of money from an opportunity cost perspective. So if an investor turns around and sells a property in year five for $2 million, that same investor can turn around and then reinvest that $2 million and start earning interest on that $2 million. This gives the investor that sold in year five a full five years of earning interest on that $1 million investment, but then another five years of earning interest on a $2 million investment for that entire 10 year period. You can compare this to the 10 year hold period scenario where the investor is only going to be earning interest on that initial $1 million investment. So if you think about this from a simple operating income perspective, and you assume you can get that same 7% cap rate on a new property that you acquire in five years, you're going to effectively be able to double your operating income a full five years earlier if you sell the property for $2 million at the end of year five. Now, obviously it's up for debate whether or not you'd sell that same property for $2 million in year five and $2 million in year 10. But for example purposes, just know that the time value of money related to real estate essentially means that your time weighted returns are generally going to be highest when capital and cash flow is distributed to investors earlier on in the hold period rather than later. This is why many investors will buy a property, renovate a property and add some value, and then refinance that property and pull cash out just two to three years down the line, but continue to hold the deal. Because they're returning so much capital to investors early on in the hold period, those investors can now turn around quickly and reinvest that capital and earn interest on that capital as well. This is also often why you'll see the IRR for a three year hold period be significantly higher than the IRR for a 10 year hold period. Now keep in mind that even for deals with a high IRR, but maybe a short hold period, that doesn't necessarily mean that they're better deals than a lower IRR 10 year hold period deal. And at the end of the day, it's really all about how long you want your capital out for and what your level of comfort is with risk in your real estate deals. Now, if you wanna learn more about this and other key financial metrics and concepts used in commercial real estate investing, I highly recommend checking out my course, the Real Estate Financial Modeling Bootcamp. That's gonna teach you all of these key real estate investment metrics that you need to know to be able to analyze deals and even how to build a real estate financial model from scratch. And if you're really trying to break into the industry this year and wanna go all in on mastering real estate finance and financial analysis, check out Break Into CRE Academy. That includes all Break Into CRE courses, all Break Into CRE models, and some additional one-on-one -on -one support. So I hope that was helpful in breaking this down and making this a little bit more simple to understand. If you like this video and wanna see more content like this, make sure to let me know by hitting that like button, subscribe to the channel, and share this with anyone else who might find this helpful. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.